spotlight shining bright. Gonna have a grand new show tonight with glitz and glam on the marquee. Perhaps a Tony nominee. Stars beam brightly, see them glow. Sell out nightly, SRO. It's time to applaud the Broadway beat. Hello, I'm Richard Ridge, and welcome to Broadway Beat, our weekly half-hour behind-the-scenes look at the very best of a New York theater on Broadway and beyond. This week, we've got a great show in store for you. We'll go into the recording studio where Tony Award winner Brian Stokes Mitchell has recorded his first solo album for Playbill Records, simply titled Brian Stokes Mitchell. We'll also bring you highlights from the 2005-2006 Outer Critics Circle Awards. But we start things off by dropping by Cipriani's on 42nd Street for the Actors Fund of America's 2006 Gala. The Actors Fund, which is the oldest organization helping all that work in the entertainment industry, pulled all the stops out for their 2006 Gala. This year they honored producer Rocco Landsman with their Medal of Honor. Other recognition went to Jed W. Bernstein and Alan Eisenberg, who received the Netta Harrigan Logan Award. The entertainment for the evening included Audra McDonald, Brian Stokes Mitchell, Daniel Jenkins, and the Jersey Boys. <laughs> Well, it's a, it's a great evening, and I'm, uh, I'm very happy that all the money was able to be raised. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. A lot of my old friends are here, which is what's going to make it especially meaningful for me. Just give your history with the Actors Fund and what it means to you. Well, I've been on the board a long time, and I've been able to see the work that the Actors Fund does. It's, it's really important. It's irreplaceable. No one else is doing it. And uh, Joe Benicasa and his staff do tremendous work, and I'm just happy to be you know, able to do my share. And just talk about the Actors Fund benefits that, of course, take place at many of your theaters, what that evening is like. Well, they usually, you know, they have stars there. They have people that people want to come and see. Uh, I always look forward to them, and uh, I'm hoping tonight will be uh, will be a great evening. Just hope I just hope it's not too long. And I think we're going to be okay on that score. Well, you know, the Actors Fund helps everybody in show business, not simply just actors. It helps producers, it helps stage managers, uh, stage hands, everybody. And, you know, it's just one of the quintessential parts of our, of our wonderful support system. I'm uh, on the board of uh, Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I actually have just uh, completed a 10-year stint as a counselor at Actors Equity. And uh, I, I have thought that now that what I want to do is really uh, devote a lot of my time to the Actors Fund. Um, as I'm getting older, I'm needing, you know, their wonderful support system, and it's, um, it's just a quint quintessential part of our lives as actors. Talk about what the audience reaction is the night you do an Actors Fund show and what that's like. It's kind of one of the best shows ever. <laughs> um, it's the last time I did an Actors Fund performance uh, was in Kiss Me Kate, and. And I actually cried several times during the performance just because it's such, it's such a wonderful community. I feel so honored and blessed to be a part of the community. And you really get a sense of, of that, you know, when you're doing one of those performances because you're so supported. It's really wonderful. When Lola sings, the sex begins to Thick and sticky, and the beat starts getting tricky. When Lola sings, when Lola sings, everybody goes wow. When Lola sings, everybody's body goes wow. Well, they're, they're, the first thing, what's so wonderful about the Actors Fund is 
the extraordinary range of programs it does. The gala is always wonderful fun, just on a fun point of view. You see a lot of your old friends, see people, wonderful, wonderful, long-time supporters of the Actors Fund and many, many new people who come on board. And tonight is a particular pleasure for me, not only as a trustee, but personally to be presenting an award to Alan Eisenberg, who is finally leaving Equity, which is very uh, sad for us, but he's, by God, he's paid his dues. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very, very delighted to be presenting to him tonight. And talk to me about when were you first aware of the Actors Fund? When was that? That was in 1976. And as a matter of fact, I approached the Actors Fund because at that time, my father was very ill. And um, it was a time in my, mine, my sister and my brother's life when we were not, we were not financially uh, well off at all for, well, you know, actors. <laughs> and I, I never thought the Actors Fund would say yes. I, you know, I sort of didn't know much about it. And I said, you know, we just need some help in to get him to the St. Barnabas in the Bronx. They dealt with it in such a wonderful, wonderful way. And I was so indebted to them for the help that they gave my dad that I immediately became a member and then served on the Western Council for some time when I lived out in Los Angeles. And then I'm, I'm not sure how long I've been a trustee now. I lose, I lose track. I, I'll, I'd certainly like to be a trustee for as long as they would like me to be one. Well, I feel wonderful. It's uh, been a be beautiful day, and uh, the Actors Fund is a wonderful organization, and all the men are handsome, and all the women are beautiful, so it's great, to, and so are you, and so it's, it's great to be here tonight. Now, tell me how you found out you were getting this award, and tell me what the award means to you. Well, uh, Joe Benincasa, for the general manager of the Actors Fund, uh, called and told me uh, that I was getting the award, and I was, of course, very honored. You know, I knew Ned, Ned and Logan, uh, and so just the fact that I knew it was very meaningful to me and she was an actor uh, I checked her I checked her credits I'm gonna make reference to that tonight and so get, getting getting an award uh, uh, in honor of a, of, of a woman who had a wonderful career and was an actor is, is very very special and and any award that she, that comes from the Actors Fund which does a totally wonderful job very committed people very dedicated people the, the community certainly needs this kind of support so it's just a great honor to be here now, you're actually leaving Actors' Equity I'm leaving, when? I'm leaving Equity uh, in October. My, my contract expires then. It'll be 25 years then, the, the longest in the, the history of the, uh, of the union, which is about 93 or 94 years old. And uh, I've heard, I mean, I've been shocked to hear people say, well, you're, you're a living legend. It, it doesn't feel that way to me. It just feels like, you know, trying to do your job er every day. And it's been a... It's been a privilege to, to represent the actors in this country, and it's been a privilege to see as much theater as I've been able to see, to meet as many people as I've been able to meet. It's been terrific. That's been the best part of the 25 years. Well, you know, uh, uh, the theater, the actors, uh, uh, all the people I've met, yes, that's the best part. And, and helping the members, I mean, really helping the members is, has been terrific. Now tell me why you wanted to be a part of tonight's Actors Fund Gala. Uh, a couple of reasons. My partner told me I should be here and it would be good. And, uh, and, uh, also, uh, they're honoring Rocco and, uh, and, and it's his theater we're in. And, uh, it'd be pretty nice if we, if I did show for this. Look out for me, look out for me. The Outer Critics Circle, the organization of critics, writers, and journalists covering the New York theater for out-of-town media, recently held their 2005-2006 OCC Awards at Sardi's. Here are some highlights. And were you pleased, they asked, of Helen in hell? Was I pleased, she said, that all Troy's towers fell? 
and Priam's sons were slain and lost his throne. And such a war was fought will ne'er be seen again and fought for me alone. Was I pleased, she said. Oh, I should think I was. <laughs> The whole year is just everything's happened so fast and what it, 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 I started out wanting to just survive the role which was such a big undertaking and I was so frightened and there was a cast uh, almost intact from La Jolla that was coming in. I was the new kid. Des McAnuff was a director I'd always wanted to work with but never had. I was making my Broadway debut. Uh, I wanted to make sure that he thought I was good. You know, so. Those feelings, you know, being aware of those feelings of the almost just a scared kid is basically what I'm. I'm an, I'm an adult, but when it comes to Broadway, I'm a baby, and so uh, those scared new kid in the class kind of feelings that I that I relate to because I was a military brat, so I was going through the same emotions I would go through when I moved to a new town and had a new class and I didn't know the teachers or the principals or whatever, you know, same exact emotions, which was really weird. To now be uh, receiving awards um, and to be nominated amongst people who I've admired for 15, 20 years like Michael Cerverus and, and Harry Connick Jr. who I've been a fan of since I was 16 you know uh, that is um, just breathtaking because you know where was I uh, when I started out I was afraid of everything and now in some ways that you know I'm on top of things. It's, it's great. Tell me what the best part of the journey has been. I'm sure there's so many wonderful things like who's your favorite child. But what's been the best part of this whole Jersey Boys journey for you? The best part of the journey has been discovering that, uh, that my own work ethic and, uh, and, and that of my castmates has sort of, uh, you know, then pays off. Well, it was, you know, it's a, a show that's been kind of developing for a really long time, but this segment of it has had it unbelievably fast. It's like, we're in New York. It's open. The awards. Go. It's like one, yeah. it's been like one trip. It's sort of, it's all happened in one, like, vacation or something. It's like, yeah. Especially from when we did the NAMP reading, that festival. From there, it's just been, like, an incredible whirlwind. Previous to that, the show did technically start... 88. 98. 98, but with great hiatuses in the middle where it was where we didn't even have any expectations for the show so uh, yeah it's been a tremendous tremendous event for us did you guys change stuff when you came to New York we've changed uh, on every actually every incarnation has been uh, uh, an evolution of it you the, know occasionally a number has been changed the, the biggest uh, the really big change between Toronto and Los Angeles we were in Los Angeles in the fall uh, from Los Angeles to New York it didn't change a tremendous amount there was a little one well, a song different like a song and a half difference. Well, it's been fantastic since the first day of rehearsal, to be honest. I mean, it's I've so loved working with John, and it's and this company is so extraordinary, and everybody in it has. I mean, it's remarkable that they're fantastic instrumentalists, they're incredible singers, and they're terrific actors, and the material couldn't be more exciting or more challenging. And I mean, for me, it's a special thrill because it was the first Broadway show I ever saw with Len Carriou. So to me, it was the essence of what you know, the, the highest challenge you could have as a Broadway actor. And so now to get to actually measure myself against that kind of material eight times a week is just a thrill. And we felt by the end of rehearsals, we felt like we were certain we had something really special for us, but you never know if anybody else is going to feel that way. So we did it for audiences and, and they embraced it. And that was by no means a foregone conclusion because, you know, we were tampering with a classic and something that was near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. So, you know, it could have gone either way. And uh, that people embraced it, that audiences embraced it was thrilling. And then you think, well, but what are the press going to make of it? And then they also, you know, couldn't find enough wonderful things to say about it, which was so heartening and so humbling and flattering. And, and, uh, and it's just sort of continued. It's tough being a show that opens in the fall. You always wonder, is anybody going to remember us by, the, you know, by this time of year? And, and mercifully, you know, they have. And we're, we couldn't be more grateful and happy to be a part of all of this. Anyway, I'm, I'm so honored and so thrilled to be up here um, accepting this award. Uh, it's been, needless to say, quite an amazing ride um, that I've been able to take with Big and Little Edie, particularly Little Edie, um, on this journey in Great Gardens. Uh, I want to thank Scott Frankel 
who's sitting in the back there. <clears throat> and, um, and Tim Sanford at Playwrights Horizons, um, and Michael Borowski, my publicist, and Billy Russo. I want to thank the whole table back there. <laughs> well, I really think it's, it's Edie, and I think that she's uh, sort of like a spiritual entity that, um, is, that, comes to, that gets to come to life eight times a week, and I'm really, I really feel like I'm sort of the maidservant to, to Edie, and that's what I want to be, and I think that's what really people hunger for. Well, she's also a survivor. When you look at Edie, I mean, that's what I think people relate, relate to, too, don't you think? Yeah, I do. She's the disenfranchised, the marginalized, and I think that people quote-unquote normal people can relate everyone there's something in that story that everybody can identify with oh god my god another winter in a summer town the beach is empty they cover the pools Patio umbrellas come down Oh God My God Another winter In a summer town One little leaf Adrift in the breeze Refuses to fall Sky. Blown by the wind, it clings to the trees, unwilling to wither and die. The summer's over, but I'm still a girl, cavorting in my carnival crown. From blossom to blossom, I buzz like a bee, then glance in the mirror, and who do I see? A middle-aged woman inhabiting me. Because it's winter in a summer time. I think the best part of the Drowsy Chaperone, I could go on for about a week with this, but the best part is that the role was yet to be really fully discovered. And then when I was cast in the role with the creative team and with Casey, my director, I was able to invent this wonderful, wonderful woman. And I, to me, she's like a role of a lifetime. I feel like she's my, my inner diva. And I love working with her every night and being this role and having it kind of be written for me. It's a real privilege. And it's really a blast to misbehave out there eight times a week. I love it. You know, it's this amazing thing. It's like we're pa part of the class of 2006 because we just keep seeing each other at the same events. You know, we were all there was a Tony nominee luncheon earlier today, and it, I just saw Michael Servers. It's like, oh, we're gonna have another salad. I said, maybe we'll have chicken again. Who knows? And it's great because you know, at the at the Tony nominee luncheon, I just went up to Ray Fines and I was like, I just have to say hi. And it's like you feel like you can because you're not just some crazy fan on the street, you know, but you can actually go up and say, I, I adore you, I love your work, and I'm so glad you're here on Broadway. And it, it you sort of because we're sort of all forever linked because our shows are on Broadway this season. Tony Award winner Brian Stokes Mitchell recently recorded his first solo album entitled Brian Stokes Mitchell. It is part of a new line from Playbill Records under the guidance of executive producer Richard J. Alexander. We dropped by the recording studio for this magical undertaking. Could be, who Something new any day I will know right away Soon as it shows It make a cannonball and down through the sky Gleaming its heart bright as a rose Ooh, 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 ooh. It's 
It's only just out of reach Down the block on a beach Under a tree I got a feeling there's a miracle do Gonna come true Coming to me Well, doing an album like this is like giving birth, I think, as, as far as you know, I know anything about giving birth, actually. Um, it, it's joyous, it's, it's terrifying, it's, it, it's amazing, it's exciting, it's daunting, it's all of those things put together, uh, particularly because this is my, my first solo album. This is probably my, I think, 15th album that I've recorded, uh, but my very first solo album and my first self-produced album. So there's, there's a, a, a lot... Uh, a lot at stake for me, and uh, a, a lot of nurturing that I've I've done with it. So I'm I'm really uh, kind of excited right now. I'm in the exciting stage. I'm excited to see what's going to happen now because most of my work is done. It's like the baby's cooked. Okay, popped it out. Now what's it going to turn out to be? Um, this is a really interesting venture. The way this album is is actually uh, kind of being released. It's uh, being released on on a new label, Playbill Records. And I'm really, really excited about that because originally when I had thought about uh, producing and releasing my own album, I thought I could do this on my own on the internet as so many people are doing their own internet businesses now uh, because I have a relatively large fan base and I have a, a, a website that people visit and I thought I could advertise it on that and, and just sell it there with the people that I know because what you have is a, a better... Uh, potential to make money doing something like that honestly um, because you have less overhead and more of the profit basically goes to you there's less that it's is being uh, farmed out but um, a, a friend of mine uh, who's a mutual friend of, of Phil Bursch's introduced us one day and we had lunch and we just hit it off immediately and um, and he talked about this idea of Playbill and I realized wow that's a larger audience than I have even online but that's very much who, who my core audience is and it just seemed like such a, a perfect uh, match to uh, have me uh, uh, debut on, on that uh, for me because uh, I have access to, to all of Playbill's audience. Uh, I think they have a subscription of about 4 million per month. They've got an incredible website and playbill.com that uh, about 180,000 regular subscribers uh, and then millions and millions of others all over the world that, that look into it and uh, it just seemed like a, a no-brainer. Was lost, the losing dice were tossed, my bridges all were crossed, no way to go. Now you're here, and now I know just where I'm going, no more doubt or fear. I'm on my Just in time Just in time And change my lonely life That lovely day Just in time I don't know. I don't know how you balance life. If you find out the answer, let me know. You, I think you, the, the trick is you just keep working at it. That's all that you can do. Um, there's so much, you know, I think life in its essence, what we're trying to find, what we all strive for is balance. But 
constant change is here to stay. So it's always throwing something different at us, and it's very hard to find that balance. But that's the fun of it. That's the fun of life. That's the challenge of life. That's what I love about life. It's never the same thing twice. I love getting thrown curveballs. I, I love that. I love the great things that come, and also the awful things. It's all part of what makes us rich human beings, and what makes life such an incredibly wonderful, fascinating thing to be a part of. I, I'm just, I love it. I love the journey. And for me, I think that is the trick. Life isn't about the destination. It's about the journey. It's about how you get from here to there. And it's about the little stops along the way that you make. And it's about uh, um, the little towns that you visit and the, little, uh, and the people that you meet and the new songs that you learn. That's what, that's what life is about. And that's what I enjoy. And I think the secret maybe is just enjoying it. Uh, Joseph Campbell, who's one of my, my mentors, uh, I consider, uh, I never met the man, of course, but uh, I, I've read a lot of him, says, uh, we must learn to be joyful in the sorrows of life. Um, and I think that is the, the, the trick to life, is take it all and learn to experience it all and appreciate it all with joy. It's not that I don't want a lot Oh, hope for more, or dream of more. But giving thanks for what I've got makes me so much happier than keeping score in a world that can bring pain. I will still take each chance. For I believe that whatever the terrain our feet can learn to dance Whatever stone life may sling We can moan it or we can pray for it Sing it, sing it, feel it Grateful, grateful, truly blessed and duly grateful, truly blessed and duly